In this fourth video, we're going to look at the origins of what predisposes us to become addicted. And there are genetic predispositions, the way we are able to handle stress. But in this one, we're just more or less going to talk about the environmental uh, conditions, especially in early childhood, that predisposes us to become attached to coping behaviors. So, unfortunately, most of this stuff from the research begins in the first year of life. In the first year of life, a little baby's brain makes a very simple, very simple decision. And that decision is whether the world is safe or dangerous. If the world is safe, that baby's brain wires itself into a, like an exploratory kind and learning kind of brain. It can explore its world, the world is safe, it doesn't have to, to, um, to survive, so it becomes an, a creative and exploratory brain. But if you grow up in what researchers call chronic inescapable stress, okay, the brain really rewires itself in incredible ways. And what it actually happens is the brain becomes a hypervigilant brain. Rather than exploratory or creative brain, okay, now it, it's, it's a dangerous atmosphere. So the brain wires itself kind of like a radar, where it's always scanning the atmosphere to see if things are safe or dangerous. Okay? And what's so important about this is when it rewires itself this way, that the baby's brain predisposes itself also to be able to cope with a stressful environment. So, quick example. So when a baby cries out, and most of this happens unfortunately in the first nine months of life. When a baby cries out, why does it cry out? Well, because it's in pain, okay? It's, you know, lonely, bored, upset, stomach ache, diapers are dirty, you know, and so it cries out, and if somebody comes and meets its needs, then that baby learns a little something. Well, when you have needs and you cry out, it kind of makes you vulnerable, don't you? doesn't it? Because you're relying on somebody else. So you're vulnerable, you have needs, you cry out, and somebody comes and comforts you, the brain actually says, wow, being trusting and attaching to be vulnerable to other people is a good thing. Okay? So it forms trusting relationships. But if you grow up in, in a destructive or abusive or stressful environment and you cry out and nobody comes, or you cry out and something bad happens, which is what happens in, say, most dysfunctional homes, is a lot of times the parents are just able to survive meeting their own needs. So when children have needs, they're discouraged not to have needs because the parents just don't have the ability to meet those needs and cope. So it's discouraged. Thing. So you cry out, you know, you have needs, and then something bad happens. Well, the brain makes a little simple decision in order to be able to cope and survive. It says having needs creates pain, so I just don't have any needs. So what happens here is when our ability to bond, trust, and attach to other people gets damaged, then we have to learn to be able to cope on our own. And that's kind of the bottom line here, okay? is that, and where addictions start, is if I can't get my needs met from you, I have to learn to self-gratify. And see, we are designed by God, in a natural of our, of our being, to when we're hurting, lonely, stressed, fearful, you know, isolated, whatever, you know, um, the situation might be, we're designed to get those needs met with relationships, relationships with God and relationships with other people. Okay? But when we're not able to do that and our ability to do that gets damaged, then we have to do something that we're not designed to do, is I have to meet my own needs. So if I can't get gratification from you, I have to learn to self-gratify. Now listen, listen to this because it's important. All addiction is self-gratification. 
That's what addiction is, it's self-gratification. It's functioning as we were not designed to function as human beings. And when we function and try to function as we're not designed to function, we have to find a way to cope. So I have to find a way to get my needs met and self-gratify, well, as soon as a substance or a behavior comes along that, that meets that need, the brain, remember the limbic system, equates it with survival, okay, and creates a craving for that. Thus, an addiction is born. And remember in our last video that 100% of the pain in our life comes from what? Relationships. So the thing I need the most, which is you, is the thing I fear the most, which is you. So I have to learn to self-gratify. And of course, this is, this is what we call a double bind. You know? And a double binds are kind of at the core of all addictions. It's a lose-lose situation. When the thing I need the most okay, is the thing that hurts me the most, whether it's drugs or alcohol. But in this case, it's especially relationships. Okay? So, as some of the statistics that are troubling with this is that 70, 60% of the children in our country under the age of one are growing up in some kind of daycare. 75% okay? of children over the age of one are in daycare. So they're having to compete to get their needs met in a situation, and some daycares are better than others, okay? that is not from their natural mother. Okay? And that's what our mother does. It's our mother's influence in the first couple of years of life that creates our brain with the ability to love, trust, and attach to other people. So if you grow up in some kind of daycare that to some degree, depending on your genetics in the daycare, your ability to bond, trust, and attach to others is going to be compromised. And this is what we call attachment disorder. Okay? And what psychology calls an attach, reactive attachment disorder, which means the ability to receive and give love and affection and care about other people gets damaged, and this whole independent lifestyle self gratification takes over, which ultimately, you know, in the worst cases, is what we call antisocial personality and leads to, you know, prison and antisocial, you know, kinds of problems. So this is really what predisposes us to. Um, become addicted is is all addiction is self gratification. So listen to how important this is and how simple it is. So if all addiction is self gratification, then what is all recovery going to be? Remember what recovery means? It means to return to a former healthy state. So if self gratification is the core of all addiction, so recovering from self gratification is going to be what? learning to get those needs met from relationships, from God and from people. And this is foundational to successful recovery. So you see I have a lot of bottom lines, and this is one of my bottomest bottom lines right here. And how simple this is, but not easy. That the bottom line of the Genesis process is, is that all recovery which will work on, on what drives self-destructive behavior is a process of learning to trust again. If you're not in a process of learning to trust again, you're not in the process of recovery, of learning to return to a former healthy state. Okay? Understanding this is at the core of what makes the Genesis process so successful. Okay? In the next video, video five, we're going to look a little bit at how to apply this understanding in a practical way that can bring healing instead of just coping from what drives addictive behavior. I'll see you in video five.